So one class of algorithms is, as Morgan said, these hybrid ray raster algorithms. We, we mostly use extra rays to augment or improve the quality of existing raster-based solutions. Um, there's a number of areas. We can list many, many of those. But one that I think is, is quite illust um, illustrating this in a good way is um, work we've done at NVIDIA about, it's also a collaboration with UNIT in ILMX Labs, work about how to shade and get correct shadows on, from, from area lights on glossy surfaces. And this is it's, it's a pretty hard problem. Um, we, we've seen that there's, over the last few years, there's been methods developed for evaluating analytically the, the lighting through linearly transformed cosines, for example, but then you ignore the shadowing term. If you go to the other end of the spectrum, you, have, you could potentially do stochastic sampling of your shading, shoot random rays and evaluate your shading uh, with the glossy term, but that, that leads to very noisy results. So none of those are a perfect solution. Um, what people tend to do maybe is, is shoot, um, take shadow samples, either from a shadow map or now maybe trace shadow rays, to approximate and average those shadow samples to approximate the visibility. But the fundamental problem is that the shading and the shadowing here are correlated. You can't evaluate shadow in one direction and do shading in a different direction for a glossy surface. That just doesn't lead to the right result. So if you, if you do the shadow term, modulate the glossy term with that, you get this effect on the third image that the glossy reflection kind of fades out, um, which is clearly incorrect. So uh, hybrid algorithms solve this. I think it's best illustrated through pictures. Um, the algorithm outputs first the unshadowed area lighting solution using linear transformed cosines. As a second output, it produces a noisy but correctly sampled shadowing. So in this case, there's a few, maybe only one shadow sample per pixel, but it's evaluating the full BRDF. Then by filtering that, this noisy picture, and then dividing the two, dividing the analytical incorrect solution by this filtered and, and you know, correctly estimating solution, you get the shadowing term that is actually a very good correction term for your shadows, unlike the, the just average visibility we saw earlier. So if you take this shadowing term, start with your unshadowed image and apply that. Then you have a nice, you know, nice stable um, sh area light shadows that works on both diffuse and glossy surfaces. So I think this is, this is an illustrative example, but I think it's, it's a good example showing that through a small, 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 small number of rays per pixel, you can augment an existing algorithm and produce much nicer results. Another, maybe you know, a little bit easier to explain, use case is to simply replace or augment your existing screen space and occlusion pass with a very small number of stochastic samples sent through ray tracing. And these rays are cheap to trace because they're both shorter and you don't do any expensive shading at the hit points. So here's an example, two, shadow, two samples pixel, and then you know, fairly standard denoising filter, some kind of bilateral filter. And then comparing that to the ground truth, it's not exactly the same, but it's a lot closer than the screen space and occlusion algorithms. And you can also imagine doing a hybrid where you take samples from screen space and then augment those samples with rays to, to produce a, a you know, nicer result that's very, very close to ground truth. 